Hello everybody, today is Friday, October 9th, 2020, 7.30 p.m., 68 Fahrenheit, 20 Celsius. I'm on the corner of Houston Street and Ludlow Street in the Lower East Side of Manhattan in front of the iconic Katz's Deli where you can get a gigantic pastrami sandwich. This location's been here since 1888. And today I'll be walking the Lower East Side all the way to Chinatown. I'm gonna explore some of the smaller streets in the Lower East Side. This street in particular is supposed to be a closed off street to automobiles, but the barriers were removed and the traffic is traveling at slower speeds. I like to see how the Lower East Side is doing on this fine Friday night. Here we've got a hotel, the Ludlow. I don't really travel this section of the Lower East Side on the weekends. So this is more of an exploration video for myself for the first time as well as you. I haven't really covered this area too much during the post COVID reopening. We should say the COVID reopening, it's not post COVID. But as you can still hear, there's still a lot of outdoor dining. Indoor dining is in effect in New York City at 25% capacity. Aha, Van Leeuwen ice cream. Used to be my favorite ice cream in New York City until the Museum of Ice Cream actually took that crown. But Van Leeuwen is still good. Here's La Margarita Pizza. I have to say, there's a lot of life here in the Lower East Side. You can see here this car was thinking about going straight, but it can't. Look at all this activity here. This is so great to see New York City like this. All right, so this person works here. They're letting this vehicle through. Look at this, they've got music playing as well as um, a lot of outdoor tables and seating for all the customers. So the restaurant's enticing, the customers are going to dine there. Live music here being performed. Always great to see the activity here, back in New York City. I'm very near the Williamsburg Bridge right now. Only about a block or two away. Maybe on the next street. I will make a right turn and explore the other side streets of the Lower East Side. Actually, I'm only one block away from the Williamsburg Bridge, so it's actually a great time for me to make a right and show the rest of the Lower East Side. Creperie with their nice floral outdoor dining area. What the hell is Belgian fries. Yeah, it's a fourth axis stabilizer. Yeah. It helps uh, smooth the walking. Yeah. It's like, you see, it, it's very smooth. Yeah, it's perfect. Plus the gimbals here. So it stabilizes this way. The only issue is if I point it up, 
then it gets kind of jerky because the spring doesn't move. Yeah, yeah so there's still a drawback. Yep. Yeah. Interesting, All right, enjoy your night. You find me at Action Kid on YouTube. I'm hearing a lot of that now. People are interested in this setup. Maybe I should do a uh, equipment reveal or how I record my videos again. Here's another open streets area. Very quiet on this block. There isn't much restaurant activity here. Only on the corner back there with Ludlow Street. Maybe Orchard Street will have some more life to it. Orchard Streets looks quiet on that block. And over here, we got some more restaurants, although it's quiet over here as well. I guess Ludlow is where all the action is. There's one table here, Phil. So there's some parts of the Lower East Side that have life to it and then some parts that aren't doing so well. And that's what kind of scares me about the future of New York City. A lot of these restaurants, even though they may look busy with the outdoor dining, they still have to pay the same rents, they still have to pay the same overhead, and many of them cannot survive like this, especially because the cold weather is coming and 25% capacity with a lot of restrictions, isn't gonna cut it for many of these restaurants, sadly. So, in front of me is Delancey Streets, and across the street from there is the Tenement Museum. It's an actual museum, you can go in and see how people used to live. Sometimes you can see like three families in one apartment, that's how they used to live back then. I think the Tenement Museum is reopened. You may have to make an appointment before you go though. Here's the corner of Delancey and Orchard Streets. You can see all the traffic coming off the Williamsburg Bridge onto Delancey. And off in the distance there on Essex Street, you can see the Essex Street Market. All right, I have the walking signal, so we'll go. Tenement Museum. So this street also is an open street which is close to car traffic. Unless it's going very slow like this one. I was looking at the Google Maps and they have this as one of the streets that's shut down. Here 
there's Kanji Village. The outdoor seating for Kanji Village. I only see one table seated though. This area is somewhat busy. Merchants and advocates of Great Pier. They even got kegs for their decoration, kegs of beer. Really adds to their ambiance. Here's the intersection of Orchard Street and Broom Street, and wow, there's a lot of activity here. Let's go, let's go walk down this way, one block down Broom Street, and then walk back the other way before I continue back on Orchard. Look at this. All the young people are out here now at some time, a wine bar. Here's Fat Choi, which seems like a Chinese spot. Basically means good luck in Chinese, Fat Choi. But I guess that's a good pun because Fat Choi can mean, hey, you're eating so good, you're gonna get fat, like Mr. Choi. All right, let's go back the other way because I wanna continue on Orchard Street. I really like the way these restaurants set up their structures. They got the top here to protect against the elements. A lot of open air, so people feel more comfortable. And here we have Barrio Chino, which means Chinatown. I went to Mexico City and there was a Barrio Chino in Mexico City. It's just Spanish for Chinatown, so I guess maybe it's a Spanish and Chinese fusion. With the integration of many, many ethnicities and cooking styles, you get some really interesting food choices. Things you may not think that were possible. Sticky rice. And I wish you can just smell this food through the video as well. Orchard Grocery. Over here it seems lively as well, but in my opinion, I don't think they have enough light here. It would be a lot better if it was a little bit brighter, even though this light is here, but I don't think it really creates the right mood for the perfect type of outdoor dining. All right, I've reached Grand Streets. There's multiple ways I can get to Chinatown from here. Actually, you can consider this Chinatown already. Yeah, let me go this way, past Allen Street, so I can show you the northern boundary of Chinatown. Allen Street turns into First Avenue after Houston Street. A drink. A lot of cyclists there. You want to make sure you look out for the vehicles as well as the bicycles. 
Yeah, let me cross the street. This driver looks confused. Wonder if that driver would have continued turning if I didn't have the camera on him. So at this time, Chinatown really starts closing up around the um, eight o'clock time period, most of the Chinatown businesses do close up, as you see over here. Here's Eldridge Street. Lively over here. Oh, this is 99 Favor Taste Restaurant. Really excellent place. I'm pretty sure they have more than 99 flavors in here. Basically, it's like a hot pot restaurant, but there's other stuff you can get here too. I've never dined here before, but I've heard a lot of good things from it, from my friends. And I was trying to walk around these people, but they got the, um, the electric scooter here, so I had to be a little bit careful walking past. But this is what happens with outdoor dining. The space kind of gets restricted, so you really got to watch where you walk, as well as all the tables and all the food they bring out. <laughs> that would be probably one of my worst nightmares, walking past the place and then a waiter comes out of the restaurant with the food and then you bump into them. and not only do you probably get burned from the food that you just spilled, but you just made some customers unhappy who ordered the food. All right, so now this is kind of like the more distinguishable part of Chinatown on Grand Street and Christie Street. What I'm going to do is walk on Grand Street towards Mott Street and then make a left. I'll show you the upper levels, upper area of Mott Street Chinatown. I did the lower level of Mott Street Chinatown in a previous video. The area where I showcased before is the more well-known area of Chinatown, the uh, most populated area. But here's where a lot of the locals really do their food shopping and the uh, supermarkets. So we'll get to see everything here. It's Christie Street. As you can see here, a lot of these stores starting to close up. I think Nam Sun is going to close up soon. This place already closed, a good century cafe. And also over here, this bakery. The bakeries always close early in Chinatown.
I've also dined at this place before, the Minky Kitchen. They look like they're ready to close up because the worker there is mopping up the floors. But let me tell you, that cat who lives in the restaurant or in the basement is the manager of that place. Sometimes the cats are the managers of the restaurant or the deli where they reside. Actually, you know what I'll do instead of walking on Mott Street? I'm going to peek down Mott Street from Grand Street and see if it's lively or not. If it's not, then I'm going to walk through Mulberry Street, through Little Italy. I think well, that'll be a good, add a little bit of a variety to this walk. Little Italy during a Friday night in October. Here's Elizabeth. All the shops are closed. The next street is Mott. Mott Street should be very similar to Elizabeth. And then after Mott is uh, Mulberry Street, Little Italy. And it only goes for two or three blocks to Canal Street. Here we go, Mott Street. Yeah, pretty much dead here. Everything's closed up. Not gonna be able to get any groceries at this time. But on the other hand, Mulberry Street, we will check it out. Here's one of my favorite restaurants in the Chinatown area, Nom Nya, Malaysian restaurant. You can see why. There's still people here dining outside and indoor too. They got a big indoor space. Ooh, that gelato looks good. Ferrara, very good Italian pastry shop. All right, I think there's life in Little Italy. Look over there. So many people dining out over there. And we'll see how Mulberry Street is at this time. Little Italy in particular got extremely hurt from COVID. They depend on a lot of business from the annual San Gennaro Feast, which happens in the middle of September. But because of COVID and gathering restrictions, that was canceled this year. So now they have to rely on people coming into the restaurants and businesses just off the street like this. And I say they're doing a pretty good job considering the circumstances. Little Italy has held up very, very well. I mean, I don't think it's sustainable to keep operating like this, but I am very hopeful when I see people dining outside like this and all the tables filled up. I don't see a single vacant table at this restaurant at Zia Maria or La Nona. No, this is Pisanos. Well, there's one table. <laughs> all right, life is here. Little Italy's back.
the thing sometimes people don't understand is just because a restaurant closes up does not necessarily mean that it's good for the competitors restaurants because you would think that oh because one restaurant closed it would be better for the other restaurant because there's more business or there's not as much competition but in an area like this where the entire atmosphere is Italian just because of those circumstances people come to Little Italy without a particular restaurant in mind and they just want to come to the area so the more closed businesses there are it kind of like detracts people from coming here so it really is a choice between operating the restaurant and making sure that you're happy with the service and then just having people come in from wherever they go if they see one restaurant is busy they go to the next one more restaurants encourage more business that's the way it really works. It's not less restaurants mean more business for the restaurants which are still around because that means there's a fundamental problem within the neighborhood. Luna restaurant looks busy, which is good. But there's a huge retail space here available. Sounds busy there on Canal Street. You know when Little Italy's ending when you hear all the traffic there on Canal Street. All right, here's Canal Street. So anyway folks, if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button for me. All the way from the Lower East Side, Cat's Deli, we got to see Chinatown as well as Little Italy. Subscribe for some more videos and live streams, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Close the door, please.